Well, you've watched us load it, and you've watched Karen cross our river with it, alone, and with friends, and you've watched our friends cross the river, and you've watched us unload it. I'm talking about our gondola. And if you've watched other episodes, you know that the road into this place is over there, that there's a river down here, and that we live over here, and that you can't get from there to here without a gondola, unless you've got a helicopter, of course. So, how did we design, how did we build this thing? And how does it work? Well, that's what this episode of Off the Grid is all about. Today, we're gonna to talk about locating, designing, and building a tram or a gondola system that works in an off-grid environment. Then in the next episode, we're gonna talk about how you pull the gondola we built across the stream. So let's get started. Like they say in the real estate, location, location, location. Well, it turns out that applies to picking a site for a gondola too. We'd have preferred it if our gondola crossed the stream right in front of the house. But we learned that it lacked three things that are needed to properly site any gondola. The first is elevation. Your gondola has got to be far enough above high water to clear winter storms. That means allowing for cable sag and calculating the clearances from the bottom of the gondola, not the cable, in the river. Width. The light, wider the span, the more allowances for weight and stress you've got to design into the system. If you under-design, you're going to have a failure. So look for a narrow span. You'll sleep better. Number three is level terrain. Unless you're building a one-way zip line, you've got to look for a riverbank that's about the same elevation on both sides of the river. So that's how we ended up here, about a half a mile from our cabin, our tram stop. Now, it's, it's the right elevation. It's about 30 feet above low water right now, so when the water comes up during winter, our tram has plenty of clearance. It's the right distance. It's about 160 feet from this side of the river to the other side of the river. Not too much to stress our system. And the elevation is good in terms of height. It's about the same elevation where we have our platform here as it is on the other side. So we have a level run across the river. And finally, we've got good dirt down here. No rocks, you can dig big holes nice and easy. Now, we didn't build a system. We inherited it. And we're not structural engineers. We're going to tell you how this system was built. And it was built well enough that it's lasted over 30 years. But if you're going to build your own system, we strongly suggest you consult with a structural engineer to make sure your design is a safe one. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to dig four holes in the ground, two on each side of the river. The smaller holes, like this one shown here, are for A-frames that will support the gondola cable on each side of the river. These pads will be about four feet wide, two feet across, and two feet deep. One of the guys in this photo is John, the guy who built our gondola over 30 years ago. Note all the rebar they're putting in for strength. The next two holes will be about 20 feet back from the A-frame. These holes need to be wide and deep because their mass are going to be your anchors, counteracting the weight of the cable and the gondola and everything you put in it. Here's John again digging the hole. As you can see, it's about seven feet wide, six feet long, and five feet deep with lots of rebar. I think John used 50 bags of concrete, those are 90 pound bags, on each hole, and he mixed that with a seven to one mix of sand and gravel. Total dead weight was 40,000 pounds for each anchor. A funny looking thing in our drawing is a steel rod with a ring on the end. This ring that pokes out is where the cables for the gondola will be attached. The rod should have welded T's on the embedded ends so they keep it from being yanked out of the cement. The jaws of our turnbuckle attach to that ring we put in the concrete. 
Now our turnbuckles are made out of galvanized steel. They have 28 inch open barrels. And the rods are two inches in diameter. The other end of the turnbuckle doesn't have jaws, it has a ring. And it's to this ring that we're going to attach our cable. Before we start connecting cable, let's go back to the A-frame that I mentioned. These A-frames need to be in place as we make cable connections to keep everything off the ground. The cable will sit on top of the frame. Now the A-frame has its own cable. One end hooked to a ring on the back of the A-frame, the other leading to the ring embedded in the concrete. This cable stabilizes the frame and keeps it from tipping forward from the weight of cable and gondola. Our A-frame uses five inch galvanized steel tubes with quarter inch walls. Base plates are welded and then bolted to the concrete pad. And on top is a saddle made of 3 8 plate steel with little ears on the top to trap the cable. These are heavy duty frames. The vertical load on these things is over 10,000 pounds. For cable, you need to begin by measuring the overall distance from anchor to anchor, allowing for an eight foot rise to that A-frame. And for the loop connections, you're gonna stick on each end so you can make attachments to the turnbuckles. Cable size should be based on span and loads. Ours is over 160 feet long. The cable is one inch in diameter. And those compression loops, by the way, need to have machine compressed fittings that crimp the cable around the galvanized eye. The prepared cable gets connected to a fully loosened turnbuckle and looped over one of the A-frames. The other end gets dragged across the river. In this old photo, you can see John and his friend preparing to do just that. Once the cable is across the stream, we get to the tricky part. Lifting the cable over the second A-frame and connecting it to the second turnbuckle. This is where a tractor for lifting and a come along for pulling, pulling the cable back all the way to the ring can be real handy. Now once you've got the system in place, it should look something like this. You can see the anchors on the left and right side of your screen with those rings embedded in the concrete, the A-frames holding everything up, the tensioning cable that goes from the back of the A-frame back down to the ring, and of course the cables that goes from the ring over the A-frames across the river and back down to the other side. Now the next step, with once the system is in place, is to tighten those turnbuckles on each end so the cable has just a slight droop to it. Now this droop is going to disappear in cold weather when the steel contracts. So a droop serves to protect the system from over tensioning. We tension the cable on arrival, maybe four or five turns on the turnbuckle, and relax it again when we're finished. One suggestion here, drive a steel pipe into the ground between one of the turnbuckle ends. This will keep your cable from rotating when you twist the turnbuckle around to tighten it. Okay, we're ready for the gondola. If you've forgotten, this is what our little beauty looks like. It's 30 inches wide, 8 feet long, with a 4 foot high basket. It's made of aluminum box tubing for weight and has a mesh floor. Now the top of the gondola sits above the cable, resting on 8 inch shivs that are 1 and 1 eighth inches wide. Once the gondola is hanging from these pulleys or shivs, bolts are placed along the frame to hold everything together. They also keep the gondola in place on the cable should one of the pulleys vaporize under load. So that's how the gondola was built. When we're ready to leave, we relax the cable. But one question remains. How do we pull that gondola across the river? Well, I think we've tried at least five different ways to do that. And we're gonna tell you about each one of them in our next episode. So stay tuned. And thanks for watching.